Hello, I'm Quinn Long, Director of Shaw Nature Reserve. Thank you for joining us for this installation of the Spotlight Series. We appreciate the opportunity to connect with you, our members, and supporters. Earlier this year, on March 2nd, the Nature Reserve turned 96 years old. In 1925, on that date, the Missouri Botanical Garden Board of Trustees acquired five contiguous farms comprising 1,300 acres. At the time, industrial air pollution and poor air quality in the St. Louis region posed a threat to the living collections of the Botanical Garden, particularly the orchid collections. An orchid range was established here at the Gray Summit Extension, as it was known at the time. Earlier this year in January, the Spotlight Series focused on a behind the scenes tour of the Orchid Range at the main campus of the Garden. Had we been doing that behind the scenes tour in the 1930s, we would have been coming directly from here in Gray Summit, Missouri to explore the Orchid Range. However, much has changed in the century or near century in between. In the intervening years, air quality has improved and the living collections of the Missouri Botanical Garden are more vibrant and vital than ever before. In those intervening years, the acreage of the Nature Reserve has expanded to over 2,400 acres that provide a refuge for native biodiversity and a popular destination for visitors to explore the native beauty of our region. With the diversity of natural habitats, including prairies, glades, woodlands and wetlands, and the Merrimack River, the Nature Reserve provides a microcosm of our region's natural splendor, all within close proximity to St. Louis. These natural features, combined with beautiful historic structures, such as the Victorian Manor of the Bascom House and the log cabins of the Dana Brown Overnight Center, make the Nature Reserve a unique setting for weddings and other special gatherings, and events such as the Daffodil Dash Fun Run, Spring and Fall Wildflower Markets, the Shaw Nature Reserve Art Show, and Whitmire Wonderlights, which transforms the Whitmire Wildflower Garden into a whimsical luminary walk for the holidays. While events have necessarily been canceled or modified to ensure the safety of our staff and visitors amidst the pandemic, attendance at the Nature Reserve, both among members and non-members, has increased significantly. With over 17 miles of hiking trails, the Nature Reserve provides a safe environment for both exploration and tranquility in these challenging times. While there's always more to explore at Shaw Nature Reserve, for the Spotlight series, we want to provide a behind the scenes look at the mission. Our efforts to inspire stewardship of our environment are comprised of three core mission components, environmental education, native plant horticulture, and ecological restoration. Today, we'll be joining staff who provide leadership for each of these core mission areas to discuss their work and exciting new projects in each of these facets of our mission including accessibility enhancements to the Nature Explorer classroom, the development of the new Ozark Ethnobotany Garden, and recent grants for ecological restoration that provide capacity to mentor the next generation of land stewards and enhance habitat for endangered bat species. Hi, welcome to Shaw Nature Reserve's Nature Explorer classroom. My name is Jessica Kester, and I manage the Nature Reserve's education, visitor services, and events teams. In 2005, Richard Louvre published a pivotal book called Last Child in the Woods, and it really focused on the disconnect between children and nature and their increased use of screen time. This book emphasized the importance of the outdoor educational programs that the Nature Reserve has offered for families and young people for decades and continues to develop today. It also resulted in a national movement sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation to create carefully designed nature play spaces for children. In 2008, this area was the first Nature Explorer classroom certified in Missouri. By design, Nature Explorer classrooms have areas dedicated to specific activities like building, music, climbing and balance, nature art, and gardening. The space was intentionally designed so that caregivers could easily keep an eye on children as they freely moved between these activities in a large fenced area. While the proximity of this location to the main entrance is convenient, 
and the shade of these towering pines is critical during hot summer months. The terrain of this location and the original path layout present accessibility challenges for people with mobility concerns, especially for people who use wheelchairs. Fortunately, we received generous funding from the Dana Brown Charitable Trust to re-envision this space. We have been working with a local landscape design firm with expertise in accessible and universal design to determine a new trail and play element layout by creating a zigzag main trail along the natural slope, improving the trail surface, moving some of the existing elements, and as future funding allows, adding new play elements, we will truly be able to welcome everyone to this space. The Nature Reserve's commitment to nature play continues across this bridge in the Sense of Wonder Woodland. Research continues to emerge that time spent in nature benefits children in many ways, including building confidence, promoting creativity and imagination, developing cooperation and problem solving skills, and reducing stress and fatigue. In support of these important developmental factors, the Ott family donated funding for the Sense of Wonder Woodland in honor of Mary Ott. This creative space opened in 2015 and includes a lookout tower, a mud kitchen, a story time area, and more. Typically, this area hosts a storybook walk, which is a deconstructed picture book posted on signs along this trail, making the important connection between literacy and nature. Time spent in natural areas like this, playing and exploring, helps children develop lifelong connections with nature. By spending time here during early childhood years, families are more likely to spend time at Shaw Nature Reserve, exploring the rest of our trails and in other natural areas. We look forward to seeing you out on the trail soon. Hello, my name is Scott Woodbury. I am the horticulture manager at Shaw Nature Reserve. Um, I take care of the Whitmire Wildflower Garden and welcome to the Whitmire Wildflower Garden. Have new things on the horizon. One of the things that uh, we're very excited about right now is the Ozark Ethnobotany Garden. We're standing in the garden, by the way. The garden hasn't been constructed yet. First phase is this stone wall that's behind me. Plants that were used for food, for fiber, for medicine, for construction are all going to be demonstrated in this wildflower garden. Yes, they will be native plants. Um, and there probably will be plants that were brought here from other parts of uh, the country and other parts of the world as well. Um, people traded plants, and so we want to try to represent uh, various peoples and the plants that they use through time. We, we've been gathering information from experts, from ethnobotanists, uh, from books, and we hope to interview people um, to learn more about how plants were used by Native Americans who lived here before we did. Uh, we hope to interview um, African American communities to see how um, they use plants. We hope to also learn more about what early settlers found when they first walked through Missouri uh, looking for plants. It's very exciting because there's so many plants that are useful for humans and many of them are beautiful and also useful. So that's really the intersection of what this garden is about. We are gonna have a log cabin as the centerpiece for the garden. The log cabin will be a period cabin that came from Viburnum, Missouri. It'll be a place where we can teach and demonstrate the uses of native plants, uh, the preparations of plants for, uh, for food, fiber, and medicine. The wall that surrounds the garden is really the the glue that ties this garden together. Some of the plantings are going to be beyond the wall, but most of the garden is going to be inside in a series of garden spaces that are going to be brimming with, with native plants, plants that we haven't had an opportunity to grow before. Uh, we're going to create something that is attractive. Uh, visitors will be able to walk through the garden, enjoy their experience, hopefully, sit on a porch of a period log cabin, look out over the garden, and, um, and learn about what plants were used for hundreds of years by people and hopefully learn also about plants that they can grow at home and use at home to make things like persimmon pudding 
or pawpaw ice cream, the wonders of uh, wild plums and how they are so deliciously tart um, and make really great jams and jellies. These are the kind of things that we're gonna be demonstrating here and bringing to the general public. So thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for uh, seeing our garden, our future garden, and uh, look for us in 2021 and 22 as we develop the rest of this project, start getting plants in the ground. Uh, we love to have you out, and I look forward to having you in the garden in the near future. Hi, my name is Mike Saxton. I'm the Ecological Restoration Supervisor at Shaw Nature Reserve, and my primary responsibilities here are I coordinate and administer our Invasive Species Control Program, our Native, spe our native Seed Collection Program, our Prescribed Fire Program, and also our Ecological Restoration Volunteer Program. Hi, my name is Calvin Maginel. I'm the Ecological Resource Scientist at Shaw Nature Reserve. I've been on site for about six months now. Um, pretty excited to be here. My, my duties are kind of a a mixture of some things that, that James was James Traeger was connected with in the past, including all the, the research that occurs on site. Um, so I help coordinate with that research. And then I'm also connected to creating a flora of Shaw Nature Reserve. Uh, we want to have a specimen of every plant species that occurs on site and also have that curated and available for researchers. And then I also assist with restoration. Um, I have experience with fire and other restoration activities. And last, I spent some time with the SIFT program and um, education. Yeah, so we like to say that we started conducting ecological restoration at Shaw Nature Reserve in about 1980. So we've got a long history of managing the land for ecological biodiversity. Uh, We've, I started here at Shaw in 2016 as basically a crew of one, and at present we're essentially a crew of seven now. So we have five ecological restoration technicians, full-time uh, positions, uh, Calvin and myself, and a lot of this was made possible by the support of uh, grant funding from foundations and from uh, federal agency. So currently we have three really exciting programs that we're working on. So one of those is working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, it's a three-year project where we are working specifically in riparian habitat along the Merrimack River uh, for the, to create an enhanced habitat for the federally endangered Indiana bat. Uh, the second program that we're working on right, right now, grant funded program, is uh, with support from the Robert J. Trulas Jr. Family Foundation. Uh, we are working in a hundred acres of the nature reserve that have proven to be challenging acres, acres with high levels of uh, non-native invasive species and low levels of our target uh, native flora and fauna. So we are, uh, with their support, we are specifically going after these 100 acres of uh, degraded habitat and making that into high quality native habitat. So the third grant that we are excited to be working on is the Bellwether Foundation. Um, that's a collaboration between Shaw Nature Reserve and the Center for Conservation and Sustainable Development at the main campus. And that project um, on our end and in general is all about capacity building. So we're working with our restoration technicians to, um, to help train them and, and further their skill sets, as well as work on, on site to manage some of the natural communities that Mike was discussing a moment ago. So it is a really exciting time for us uh, in that we've been, we've been expanding our capacity, we've got more crew on board, and, and now more than ever we've, we've expanded the number of acres that we're working in uh, across our 2,400 acres of Shaw Nature Reserve. And it's with a, the with a sense of urgency that we're doing this work. We have, the, we have the capacity to do the work now. There's a sense of urgency in that uh, we have a lot of momentum built up over years of, years of building, and, and we feel like we're, we're at a really good point in our, in our program's history where we're doing a lot of good work we have a, a good vision and a plan about where we're going in the future. 2030 is also the decade on um, restoration, ecological restoration, global ecological restoration. So uh, being a part of that and, and being able to you know, work together on these, these larger projects and, and get more done feels really good. Thank you for joining us for this installation of the Spotlight Series. 
I encourage you to come out to explore the changing colors of spring from the bluebells in the floodplains of the Merrimack Forest to the spectacular displays of blade coneflower here at Crescent Knoll Overlook and the spectacular displays of native wildflowers in the Whitmire Wildflower Garden. We look forward to seeing you.